Microsoft's had it. They're taking on Steam and Epic Games. Power Color does what has to be done, and I respect them for it. And a game that I'm very excited for the PS5 comes out today. Let's get into the hot news, my friends. I'm your host, Brett. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet, starting off with Microsoft making sure that they deal some damage to the online ecosystem that is known as game store buying because they've announced that they are going to be dropping their revenue share from games purchased on the Microsoft store on PC only from 30% down to just 12% where developers take now an 88% cut instead of a 70% cut. This is obviously following directly after Epic Game Store's footprint because Epic was the first one to change the revenue model when they went to compete with Steam, changed it from 70 to 88%. Microsoft is now doing that and leaves Steam kind of as one of the very few, at least PC platforms that is still taking a 30% cut. Obviously they have larger distribution, but that might end up changing at some point in the near future. However, it's not quite clear if this is gonna be a good business strategy by Microsoft, especially since Epic Games announced that they lost nearly half a billion dollars on trying to get exclusive exclusive games for Epic Game Store and they are losing money on the Epic Game Store. It's not quite clear if they up their revenue stream, would they be able to make up for that loss or are they just being too aggressive with trying to get those exclusives. Additionally, this adds some complication to the Apple versus Epic Games lawsuit that's going on because Apple has announced that the, one of the reasons why they think everybody should be okay with the 30% revenue split that they're taking is that it's industry standard. They quoted the fact that Steam was doing it and then Android was doing it and Microsoft was doing it and Sony was doing it and so they use them as an example of hey they're taking 30% and if Microsoft is deciding to start changing that it could potentially make it so that Apple has less of a leg to stand on when it comes to charging 30% on its app store let me know what you think of Microsoft giving more money back to the developers down below in the comments and today's episode sponsor of hot news wants to give you more space back in your pants yes my friends the Ridge wallet is the wallet redefined for a modern lifestyle. It's light, it's sleek, it's industrial, it doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your pocket, and it seriously changed my entire pocket game. You can just slip it right into that front pocket bad boy, or that little like additional pocket that's like on some jeans where you just double pocket. A lot of people still using their old wallets designed in the 90s. Get on a Ridge wallet, my friends. It can hold up to 12 cards. It's got room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber, burnt titanium, matte white, and they have over 40,000 five-star reviews. And the durable material means that each one comes with a lifetime warranty. You can buy this one wallet and carry it for life. The Ridge team's so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days and give you a free refund if you don't love it. And if you use our link in the video description, ridge.com forward slash hot news, you'll get 10% off plus free worldwide shipping and returns just by using our link and the coupon code hot news at checkout. Again, that's ridge.com forward slash hot news. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode. Now let's talk a little bit more about Microsoft and some of the plans that they announced, especially with regards to Halo Infinite. Again, changing kind of the landscape of how games are being developed on PC, announcing that Halo Infinite will not only support cross play, but cross progression on Xbox and PC. We don't have any details of when when the game's coming out, but Halo will be a pioneering game when it comes to making sure that the Series X is essentially just a PC that can only play video games. Microsoft wants to really blur the lines of what's going on there. Cross-platform, cross-play, cross-progression, Microsoft crossing all of the dots and checking all of the eyes. It's great stuff. There's also an announcement by Microsoft that they're gonna be updating Windows 10 so that you can hear Halo Infinite better. This is coming as they're saying that they're gonna improve Bluetooth audio connection as well as support for advanced audio coding over Bluetooth. So you have more support for the more modern codecs that are being supported elsewhere. The Bluetooth thing I'm actually really excited about because currently the way Bluetooth profiles work on Windows 10 is it'll differentiate like based on different Bluetooth profiles. So if you take something like my Anchor Soundcore headphones, you connect them via Bluetooth, it'll actually show up as headphones and headset. And then sometimes Windows gets confused and you're like, why am I hearing things in like only one ear or it sounds like it's mono instead of stereo. What's going on? And then you find out it was switched to headset instead of headphones. Now it's gonna merge it. Finally, thank you. Like good, yes. 
Thank you, Windows, for finally doing what you should have done. They're also updating some rearranging that happens when you go into sleep and then you come back if you have multiple monitors. The rapid hot plug detect fix is gonna be rolling out sometime soon to the Insider program. Microsoft fixing a whole lot of things that need fixing. And Nvidia fixing GeForce Now to make it 50% faster in some instances, loading up to a minute faster by doing things such as preloading games and directly linking your Steam and Epic Games accounts, which I don't know why that wasn't there from the first place, but now making it so that the cloud streaming service is a little bit faster. As soon as they support the Tesla web browser, I'll be happy because my uh, test of xCloud on the Tesla browser did not work out the way that I wanted it to. But NVIDIA also releasing drivers for some security vulnerabilities that are a pretty big deal. So you might wanna consider updating your GPU driver over these. Ranking up to 7.5 and 7.8 on the CVSS scale, you can see what's up with the NVIDIA vGPU software vulnerabilities as well as with the display driver. It's a bunch of stuff that they're fixing with security. And they're also fixing mining security because it was announced that the RTX 3060 was getting an Ethereum hash rate limiter. And then they released a driver that broke it and now they're releasing a new driver that fixes that broken thing but if you don't update to it then it doesn't fix it and so they can only force it anyways they're also saying that any card that ships from mid-may onwards will have to support this hash rate limiter further confirming the fact that they are updating a light hash rate version of the existing NVIDIA cards like we talked about in yesterday's episode of hot news now I want to talk about a GPU that I absolutely love I can't believe it took this long to get a second company to release something like this. Power Color teasing the full white RX 6700 XT Hellhound. And when I say full white, I mean even the PCB. Other companies like Asus and Gigabyte, when they launch a white graphics card, it's just a white plastic or metal shroud on top of a black PCB, which is good for a black and white aesthetic, but not for the full white experience. Obviously, you have a hard time with all of these memory chips and all of that, but you, you slap the cooler on there, you hardly notice it. Anyways, they're doing it. They're bringing it out. The blue fans on this mock-up kind of ruin it a little bit, but white PCB, thank you. Power color doing the right thing. And Bitcoin's doing the right thing according to some of you. It's going down, Bitcoin GameStop update. It's down 3.42%, only $53,000. I love how it's going down to numbers that were even seen at the beginning of the year. GameStop down a little bit and then up a little bit after hours, just flat. It's not much to talk about, but there is so much more to talk about when it comes to the crypto environment as a whole. In yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about Chia and how it's gonna be the new hard drive mining craze, apparently that's sweeping the world by storm, even though the coin doesn't launch until May 3rd. Well, it's been announced that Chia now has over one exabyte of hard drives plotted. So an entire exabyte, that is 63,020 terabyte hard drives have been plotted for Chia with the coin that's not even out yet. In further mainstream crypto news, it appears that Coinbase is now gonna be working with PayPal so that you can transfer funds onto Coinbase from PayPal. I'm not sure why you would do that. If Coinbase is where you wanna keep your crypto, you can now move your money from PayPal, but PayPal also does offer the option for you to buy crypto directly on their own app. So use it if you want, it's there now. And what's gonna be here soon is the world's first mini LED gaming monitor by Asus. Them announcing the ROG Swift PG32 UQX, which is gonna have a little bit of a drawback, which is that because it has the G-Sync Ultimate chip that goes into it, it doesn't support HDMI 2.1. So that's, that's not a thing on it. Just display port 1.4. You got the 4K 144 Hertz G-Sync Ultimate with display HDR 1400 brightness certification. It's gonna be a beautiful monitor. Lack of HDMI 2.1 makes me a little sad. And while that's the world's first mini LED monitor, here's the world's first game that is gonna require a ray tracing graphics card of some kind in order to do. It's, it's an enhancement to a previous game. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition is coming out on May six but the minimum specifications you cannot run it if you do not have at least an rtx 2060 you either have to have the new navi gpus or the rtx graphics cards in order to run this it's a little like the ray tracing settings but it's an enhanced edition so it could be sold separately and it's 
That's kind of a, a first. What's not first is you being able to play Castlevania Resurrection. Oh, you never heard of it? Oh, that's because it was a demo at E3 in 1999 and the game never came out for the Sega Dreamcast, but some people have uploaded it to the internet so that you can play the demo in case you wanna check it out. We'll leave links in the video description. You should also check out this keyboard, the Epo Maker B21. This is not a sponsored spot. I just kind of have a soft spot in my heart for the look of this retro wireless mechanical keyboard that they've launched on Indiegogo. We've worked with Epo Maker previously over on the UFD Tech channel with the GK68XS. So I really like their stuff in case you like a retro style wireless mechanical keyboard, this might be it for you. And HP decided that what is it for them is 100,000 Zen 3 cores on their upcoming supercomputer that's gonna run at 10 petaflops of raw FP64 compute power. It's gonna be using Nvidia's A100 GPUs as well as 100,000 Zen 3 cores. Just a big supercomputer. What's a big supercomputer is my brain. I think fast but I need to think faster because I didn't bring my PlayStation 5 with me on this trip and the game that I've been very much looking forward to, Returnal, is out today and reviews are actually pretty good. It's a roguelike game that essentially makes it so that you feel bad about your ability to play video games. Highly rated, I don't have my PS5, I will have to wait in order to play this, but if you guys have a PS5 and you're looking forward to Return Launch, let me know down below in the comments. And I'd suggest before you get out of here, you go check out that video I mentioned on the Epo Maker GK68XS that we had over on UFD Tech. Check that out, my friends, and we'll see you in the second episode of Hot News later today. Cheers.